4.2 we want to calculate the following figures that will appear in the cash flow statement so 4.2 we are now doing cash flow statement but we, we are uh, these are just calculation we want to calculate the following figures that will appear in the cash flow statement for 2018 4.2.1 change in investments change in investments change in investments we want to calculate change in investment for two marks change in investment our information is on page 14 and we want to calculate the change in investments let's look at the investment the investments were sitting at 600,000 in 2017 and they are now sitting at 625,000 in 2018 so the investment our fixed deposit is now 625,000 and in 2017 at the beginning of the current financial year it was sitting at 600,000 so it is clear that we have increased our investment by 25,000 so the change in investment is 25,000 the change in investment is 625,000 625,000 minus 600,000 equals to 25,000 change in investment and 4.2.2 4.2.2 we want to calculate income tax paid income tax paid we want to calculate income tax paid the formula that i always use with my learners is that we know that the income tax the income tax is always will make it pos positive income tax will always be positive and then our SARS when we are doing this calculation our SARS in brackets income tax at the beginning is going to be a plus and then our SARS in bracket income tax at the end is a minus so income tax is positive it does not change the SARS in bracket income tax at the beginning will be a plus and the SARS in bracket income tax at the end will be a minus but these signs will work if SARS income tax is a liability if SARS income tax is a liability then the beginning is going to be a plus and the end is going to be a minus for this formula sometimes they may not write it under liability they may show a sign which shows that SARS is a liability the credit sign it's still indicating that SARS is a liability sometimes it may be recorded under payables which is still showing us that SARS is a liability therefore your beginning is going to be a plus when you are doing this calculation and then your end will be a minus but if there is a change in your SARS if your SARS appeared under asset or you see if your SARS appeared under assets or you see a debit sign that is also indicating assets or it is under receivables if your SARS if you see that your SARS income tax has been recorded under assets or you see a sign that is a debit sign or receivable so then it means you also need to change the sign here 
you must change the sign. The beginning will be a minus and then the end will be a plus. So all that you need to do is that SARS income tax at the beginning is a plus and SARS income tax is a minus because SARS is a liability account. But it happens, it does happen that sometimes SARS becomes an asset and the balance is on the debit side. So in that case, you will have to change the sign. If it is the beginning that is on the debit side, so it means you must change it to be a minus. But if the end is on the credit side, it will continue to be a minus. But if also the end appeared on the debit side, it means you will have to change the sign to be a plus. So let us look at what happened in this activity when we are calculating. Let's start with the income tax. We do have the income tax for the year, which is always positive. It does not change. It is 819,000. The income tax for the year is 819,000. Right? And then let's look at our SARS in bracket income tax. Yes. Our SARS in bracket income tax at the beginning it did not appear under liabilities beginning is not under liabilities but beginning is under what under assets which is fifteen thousand sars at the beginning appeared under assets so the sign that we are going to use is a minus sign so it's eight hundred and nineteen thousand minus fifteen thousand we are supposed to add the beginning but because it appeared under assets then it's a minus we are changing the sign now minus 15,000 but let's look at the end SARS in bracket income tax at the end appeared under liabilities SARS in bracket income tax at the end appeared under liabilities and therefore there is no need to change any sign so it will continue to be a minus so SARS at the end is a minus 74,000 so then our calculation for the income tax paid will therefore be 819,000 minus 15,000 minus 74,000. 819,000 minus 15,000 minus 74,000 equals to 730,000. 730,000. And this 730,000 is income tax paid. So when it goes to the cash flow statement, it will be important that this 730,000 will have to be put in bracket because it's an outflow of cash. Even this change in investment, this change in investment because we, we increased our investment from 600,000 to 625,000. Increasing investments is an outflow of cash. So this 25,000 in the cash flow statement will be regarded as an outflow of cash because we are taking money from the bank account and we are investing it. So when we are still investing, it's an outflow of cash, but when we are now taking back our investments, that will be an inflow of cash. 4.2.3, we want to calculate fixed assets sold at carrying value. Fixed assets sold. fixed assets sold at carrying value so this is what we want to calculate here for the purposes of recording it in the cash flow statement so for fixed assets it is very important that the learners need to be clear with the fixed asset note fixed asset note the fixed asset note The fixed asset note has got the fixed assets, has got carrying value at the beginning, and it has got carrying value at the end. There is carrying value at the beginning and carrying value at the end. And in between, there is movements here. There might be additions at cost during the year. 
there might also be disposals at carrying value and there might there is also a guaranteed depreciation every year so what is it that makes the carrying value at the beginning not to be the same with the carrying value at the end for our fixed assets in the business is that during the year there may be these movements we may sometimes decide to buy a new fixed asset that is additions at cost we may also decide to sell one of our fixed assets and when we are selling our fixed assets then it will mean that our fixed assets are decreasing and also depreciation whereby our assets loses the value also decreases our fixed asset but buying a new fixed asset will then add onto our fixed asset so in this note the disposals comes as a minus and the depreciation comes as a minus and then we get into the final answer here so the reason for carrying value at the beginning not to be the same with the carrying value at the end it is because of these movements which may take place during the year so this calculation of fixed asset for the cash flow statement it is informed by this note which is fixed asset note so we can even call it this a fixed asset note formula that you can use when you want to do the fixed asset sold or fixed asset pay, the purchased for the purposes of the cash flow statement so let us see how is this formula going to assist us remember this calculation 4.2.3 is requiring us to calculate disposals at carrying value so we do not know the disposal at carrying value so the disposal at carrying value is an unknown figure so that we have x there but let's check all other information will be provided for fixed assets at carrying value we do have the carrying value at the beginning which is eight million and thirty one thousand eight million and thirty one thousand we do have the carrying value at the beginning which is eight million and thirty one thousand and we are also having the carrying value for fixed assets at the end which is 12 million 154,000 12 million 154,000 we have the carrying value at the beginning and also the carrying value at the end 12 million 154,000 and the beginning is 8 million and 31,000 right let's check for the movements additions at cost if there is any transaction which talks about the asset that was purchased yes page 15 we do have purchases of land and buildings and it is 4,840,000 purchases of land and building on page 15 there in the cash flow statement it is given as 4,840,000 do not be like confused that in the cash flow statement this is given in brackets remember if we are buying then it's an outflow of cash in the cash flow statement but here in the note we are not looking at the cash here we are looking at the fixed assets if we are buying fixed assets our fixed assets are increasing so therefore in the fixed asset note it is a positive amount but if you're taking it into the cash flow when we are now focusing on cash if you are buying fixed assets then there is an outflow of what of cash so in the cash flow statement it will be in bracket but here in the fixed asset because here we are not looking at cash we are looking at the fixed assets that if we are buying a new one our fixed assets are going to increase by four million eight hundred and forty thousand and for depreciation depreciation is also given in information a and depreciation amount is four hundred and twelve thousand so depreciation in information a is four hundred and twelve thousand right so depreciation of 412,000 right let us then do this calculation again now we can be able now to solve for x now if we just do a reversal so this is what is required here in this calculation it is informed by the knowledge of this note because now when you are doing the reversal here it will be 12 million 154,000 12 million 154,000 plus 412,000 
right? And then minus, because this amount is positive, 4 million. 840,000 minus 4,840,000 right and then minus 4,840,000 that's one zero right and then minus 8,031,000 we are working backwards let's check again it's 12,154,000 because this is negative, it's going to be a plus 412,000 minus 4,840,000 and then minus 8,031,000. So we'll be able to solve for x then equals to 12,154,000 right plus 412,000 minus. 4,840,000 minus 8,031,000 equals to 305,000. So the proceeds, the, the disposal of fixed assets is 305,000. So this is the answer, 305. So the amount that is supposed to be here is 305,000. So you can see now that it will be very difficult for you to, cal to do that calculation for the fixed asset sold at carrying value if you do not know this fixed asset note. So in, in, in some of the question papers you will notice that they may not ask the disposal. They may give you the disposal at carrying value and ask for additions at cost, fixed assets purchased. So you will still use the same formula. It's just that now your X is going to be next to the additions at cost if they are requiring the fixed asset purchase. But for this question, we were looking for the disposal at carrying value. Therefore, our X is here. So the answer is 305,000.